So as I boarded my train from Belgium back to England, I thought I'd seen my last of live Formula 1 for the 2023 season. Then when I got back, I received another message from Headouts asking if I, a Briton, wanted to go to the Dutch Grand Prix as well. I mean, what do you think I said? Hey there guys, I'm Will, welcome to FP1 and the Comedy Review, the series that cracks more jokes than Daniel Ricciardo has wrist bones. Yeah, that still hurts. Probably not as much as Danny's hand though. Anyway, I was on my way to Zandvoort for the Dutch Grand Prix. The only real downside was that first I had to travel through Luton. What that meant was huge delays for my Amsterdam flights and thus the title of most reliable means of international travel in these videos somehow remains with Ryanair. While we wait, I might as well cover the news, and with the summer break finally coming to an end, we've got some pointless silly season stories based on Helmut Marko's arse crack to cover. We'll tackle the big one first. Lance Stroll is rumoured to be retiring at the end of the 2023 season and switching to tennis. I guess in that sport, the most points you can be down is 40 compared to the 121 he tails Fernando by as I write up this video. Apparently, Joe is in trouble of losing his drive as well. Enough said, and Logan Sargent's Williams seat may also be on the chopping block, which isn't a big concern given he has no fans anyway. In real driver news, Haas announced that the Suck My Balls crew would be staying on for another year, probably because no one else really wants to drive that car at the moment. With all that drama covered, my plane was finally landing in Amsterdam, and a short train ride later, we were in the central part of the city. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And that was very nearly the end of the comedy review. With that near-death experience out of the way, we rested up for the night and hopped on the train to Zandvoort the following morning. Now look, I'll have to admit something here. Transport to and from the track in the Grand Prix I've attended in the past hasn't always been the most amazing experience in the world. But hats off to the Dutch Rail Network here for actually being good for once. Even the walk to the circuit was relatively pleasant, with stalls, food and tons of Red Bull merch. Not a lot of anything else for some reason though. There was also this within it all, and I don't think I can show it on YouTube, but let's just say it was a nice reminder that we weren't too far away from the red light district. We got into the circuit just in time for FP1, which was topped by none other than Max Verstappen. I didn't need to tell you that though, did I? The Dutchman was beaten in one aspect however, that being his antics through the gravel. Nico Hülkenberg putting on a far better display, though did bring out the first of many red flags over the weekend. Aston Martin weren't having the best of sessions either, Fernando attempting the Verstappen line and the other car remembering it had to be driven by Lance Stroll and thus attempting to go back on its summer holiday. FP2 wouldn't be till later in the day, so I, being the self-proclaimed fat f that I am, grabbed some food and thought of ways I could fit in more with the Dutch locals. With that complete, let's cover the second practice session, and if it sounds like I'm stalling, I mean you all know why. I was able to snap this picture of Daniel Ricciardo as he went around turn one, and as I looked around for the validation us influencers spend our lives begging for, the Honey Badger was careering into the turn three barriers. Oscar Piastri had gone for an adventure up the banking before this, deciding that ending Ricardo's career once wasn't good enough and it was time for round two. Daniel didn't take his hands off the wheel when he hit the wall, and the following injury has ruled him out of the sport for the foreseeable. I, as you can probably imagine, was incredibly depressed. As Ricardo was carted to the medical centre, you'd expect a more sombre vibe around the circuit. As it turns out though, the Dutch fans weren't very good at this. <laughs> Alpha Tari had the option to draft in De Vries for a shock return at his home race. I mean, he had the experience with the car and all, and you know, it'd be a nice story for the Dutchman but he is also Nick de Vries. The solution was Red Bull junior driver Liam Lawson, whose appointment made my mid-season predictions video age like the bones in Danny Rick's left hand. Josh Revel may have been getting a touch too excited at this stage, but with only FP3 to acclimatise to the car, the road was by no means going to be straightforward for Lawson. That said, despite a spin late into the hour, he didn't fare that badly, especially as when Saturday rolled around, the sunny Zandvoort skies had been replaced with torrential rain. 
I swear I'm just bringing the British weather with me at this point. Liam wasn't the first to lose it in FP3, as both Red Bulls ventured out onto the full wet Pirelli tyre, before remembering that that's about as much use as a barbed wire tampon. Kevin Magnussen was having just as much luck on the Inters though, making it a second house red flag when he showed off to Gunther why he's being retained for 2024. Joe in the Alpha meanwhile was trying to show off to some potential new employers, auditioning as a stunt driver role as he backed it into the gravel and brought out red flag number I've lost count at this point and we're not even at qualifying yet. With loads of drivers making mistakes, she'll be glad to know at least Ferrari was sticking to their usual run plan. Shame that also has to involve making a ton of errors. Charles Leclerc must have missed the track walk on Thursday, as for the majority of FP3, he didn't seem to know where it was. And being seated down at turn one, we got an excellent view every time he cocked it up. Leclerc running wide was one of two inevitable things on Saturday morning. The other being a Verstappen P1, and those damp conditions would continue as we finally geared up for qualifying later that afternoon. Charles would then somewhat redeem himself in Q1, as despite worsening conditions, he was able to squeeze himself into the top 15. That bumped Zhou into the drop zone, the Chinese driver joining Ocon, Magnussen, Bottas and Lawson, as those unable to progress into Q2. That second part of qualifying would be the opposite of the first, the track this time drying out, and thus we saw rapid improvement as the session came to a close and the dry line formed on the circuit. That usually means some shock exits, and this time it would be the maybe seven-time world champion, I mean, who knows anymore, Lewis Hamilton. And just to add insult to injury, Logan Sargent even made it through, which I won't lie confused some of the Dutch fans around us when we began to cheer for a driver whose name didn't start with Max and end in Verstappen. Logan's Q3 appearance would be a historic achievement for the American, becoming the first driver from the States to start in the top 10 since Michael Andretti back in 1993. Logan topped off this great moment by taking the Leclerc line at turn two and burying his Williams in the barrier. Let's add another red flag to the count. We'd get going again for all of four minutes until Charles himself ran wide at a corner slightly less forgiving than turn one. Now look, I know you all want another red flag meme here, but it's just too soon after the last one. In reality, this was all just delaying the inevitable, as Max Verstappen put together another stunning pole lap and shot to the top of the timing screens. He would line up on the grid ahead of Norris, Russell and Albon. Hold on, say that again? I've not mentioned Alex or video, but the tyre driver was on rails throughout the entire weekend. And with Zanvor being a tricky circuit to overtake on, what exactly could he do in the race? Well, we'll get to that in a moment, but first I've got to say a huge thank you to Head Out once again for sending me to the Grand Prix and allowing me to watch the ensuing chaos live. You should probably know this by now, but Head Out are a ticketing company that can send you to several of the Grand Prix on this year's calendar. And before you try to skip the ad, you may want to keep watching if you want to have a chance to win free tickets to the US Grand Prix. You see, together with Head Out, we're offering the first 10 people who use the code on screen to get a huge discount on their US Grand Prix tickets. That will get you into the gates at Austin for just $200. On top of that, from here on out, I'm going to hide two codes somewhere in this video. If you can be the first to find them, they'll get you an Austin Grand Prix race ticket for free. Make sure you at me on Twitter as well if you win. And if you miss out on those, remember you can always use the code FP130 at checkout for a 30% site-wide discount anyway. So make sure you head over to their website through the link in the description below. Now back to the race. So then, on to Sunday, and as we walked into the circuit, the weather situation was a bit all up in the air. My phone suggested it would be dry all day. My mates, on the other hand, seemed to predict the fury of hell. And that's exactly what we got. Rain falling as the cars toured around for the formation lap. When the lights went out for real, Verstappen held the lead as Alonso found the cheat code the Dutchman has been using all season as he piloted his Aston Martin around Albon and Russell into the bank turn three. We got more side-by-side -side action throughout the first lap, but incredibly no collisions. But by the time the cars rounded the final corners, the rain was absolutely pissing it down. Surely at this stage you had to switch onto the intermediates. Well, not if you're Max Verstappen. Just like in the Belgian sprint race, the Dutchman stayed out, whilst many, including his teammate and Charles Leclerc, came into the pit lane. Ferrari had, for once at least, made the right strategy call. Guess it was a shame they still weren't ready for it. With 100,000 Max Verstappen fans laughing at the Scuderia's incompetence, Max Verstappen was in, though had lost so much time he came out 10 seconds behind Jacko. 
At this point, I genuinely thought Sergio would cruise to victory. Then Max made up four seconds in one lap. Honestly, if the divide between the two Red Bull drivers wasn't any more clear, it was being shown right now. Max was just on another level, and Perez had no hope of maintaining P1. The conveniently long pit stop putting Max back into the first place sure helped out too though. Even though the race for the win was now seemingly over, the rain had put plenty of drivers out of position, and that gave us a ton of overtakes to enjoy. One of the big losers, however, was Logan Sargent. Somehow, he had turned his sensational P10 starting position on the grid into last place by lap 7. It seemed like Logan's Williams was equally fed up with its driver as it decided it would rather choose death as it threw the American into the tyre barrier a few laps later. That crash brought out the safety car and allowed Checo to catch back up. Not that that would mean anything, but a few more competent drivers further down the field were licking their lips at the opportunity in front of them. When we got going again, Alonso was straight on the attack, as further back, Sainz and Gasly scrapped for best of the rest. Gasly was having a superb race. Guess it's a shame he doesn't know how to use a pit lane speed limiter though. Now, do you remember earlier when I said overtaking was hard around Sanfort? Well, just like every other prediction I've made this week, F1 were determined to prove me wrong. That said, being sat at Turn 1 and watching it all, I can't say I was complaining. As the race entered its final stages though, it looked like the top of the order was set in stone. But the weather you see, it had other plans. Now we'd had sprinkles of rain here and there all day, usually nothing that would upset the on-track action. In fact, when we were warned of rain over the track commentary, no one was really getting their coats ready. And that turned out to be a mistake. Very, very heavy rain. The rain came, and it came hard, and now we understood why Leclerc had been running wide at Turn 1 all weekend. He had just been practicing for this. Guess it's a shame Ferrari retired him about five laps before this all kicked off. Perez was the first big name to take the dive, allowing Fernando through into second. Then Zhou took the Leclerc line to the extreme as he piled full pelt into the Tech Pro barriers. Not particularly ideal, and I'll admit, at this stage, even I was calling for a red flag stoppage due to the conditions. The FIA, however, appeared to have fallen asleep and thought it was fine to continue racing. Bit of a step away, given these are the same guys who couldn't trust F2 with a standing start in the dry earlier in the day. Well, eventually, that red flag made it out. Fine, here you go. And it was a saviour for Sergio Perez, who managed to checko himself into sixth in just a matter of a couple of laps. The red flag reinstated into third, as we were left with a lengthy delay whilst we waited for the track to dry. Did the Dutch fans care? Well, what do you think? I don't think the videos do it justice here, but the raving was genuinely causing the grandstand to wobble a bit. I couldn't tell if this was the best Grand Prix vibe in the world, or if I should be getting off for my own safety. In the end, I chose to risk staying for the final six laps, as Verstappen restarted the race from Alonso and Perez, the Mexican making matters even worse by picking up a pit lane speeding penalty. That meant he'd need to get up the road, and fairly sharpish if he wanted to remain on the podium. But apparently, Checo didn't, as he languished behind Alonso and eventually promoted the Alpine of Gasly onto the rostrum. Nothing would be getting in the way of Max Verstappen, however. He sailed across the line to make it nine Grand Prix victories in a row, as the bell ends in the stands kindly revealed themselves. But there you have it. As it turns out, not even God can prevent Max Verstappen from winning, and especially at the Dutch Grand Prix. It was one of the best drives of the season in a race that proved a Verstappen victory can in fact be interesting. Now I've got to say, having praised the atmosphere at Hungary and Spa, the Dutch Grand Prix really took it to another level. Was everyone raving at the most inappropriate of times? Probably, yeah, but if you're thinking about going to the Dutch Grand Prix, honestly just do it, you won't be disappointed. I should also add that despite the stigma some Max fans get, the vast majority at the track were absolutely lovely, and it was great to meet some of you guys there as well. A huge thank you to Head Out, and really to all of you watching for allowing me to get opportunities like this. If you enjoyed the comedy review, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped it a like, and got subscribed for more uploads in the future. We'll be returning to the standard format from here on out, and that means race day uploads again. I know you can't wait for that. Oh, and as a final plug, you'll be seeing some of the photos I took across this video. They'll be on my photography Insta, which is on screen now, or down in the description if you'd like to check that out and give me a follow. Last but not least, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my channel members and patrons for supporting the work I do. 
And if you'd like to get early access to some of my videos, then head over to the links in this video's description. But for now, that's all from me. So I'll see you very soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.